Fort Warren, a military stronghold whose granite walls now echo the voices of the men who lived, served, and were imprisoned here. Ever a work in progress, the fort reflects America's story for more than 150 years. The War of 1812, British warships blockade the Atlantic coast. Cities from Maine to Louisiana are attacked and looted by the Royal Navy. Americans learned what it was to be vulnerable by sea. And so, in the aftermath of the War of 1812, the United States Congress and the President were determined to build a series of fortifications along our coast to defend our ports and harbors. Boston Harbor is a high priority. Situating a fort on George's Island is a strategic move that proves critical to the city's safety. George's Island overlooks the most important natural channel coming into Boston Harbor. So if any enemy intended to attack Boston, they would most likely have to pass through this channel, along this channel, to get to the inner harbor. Granite drawn from nearby quarries is sculpted to create the imposing walls of the new fort, thick enough to withstand fire from enemy ships. This is Quincy granite. Thousands of tons of it brought across the harbor from Quincy, Massachusetts, the quarries of that town. It took the labor of thousands of men more than two decades to complete the massive project that we know as Fort Warren. April 1861, South Carolina secedes from the Union. Fort Sumter comes under fire from Confederate forces. The Civil War has begun. At the beginning of the Civil War, Fort Warren comes out of a time of peace. She's been unused since her creation in 1850. In the spring of 1861, Fort Warren is garrisoned for the first time. Hundreds of Massachusetts militiamen train and live here. Farm boys, clerks, scholars. The fort also receives its first installment of artillery, and throughout the war, it is heavily armed with 10 and 15 inch Rodman cannons. Troops stationed out here for training had a private John Brown in their midst. Peasing him, they created a marching song based on John Brown, the abolitionist. It evolves into one of the most beloved anthems of the Civil War, the Battle Hymn of the Republic. Six months after the outbreak of war, Fort Warren is designated as a prison, housing Union deserters, blockade runners, and mostly Confederate prisoners of war. The confinement at Fort Warren was, by the standards of the 19th century, rather good. I feel it but due to say that prisoners here have no cause to complain of their treatment. The rooms we live in are elegantly built and well finished inside. The officers are courteous and, in many instances, Kind. Fort Warren's most notorious prisoner is Alexander Stevens, Vice President of the Confederacy. Mr. Stevens was a Confederate firebrand. He preached secession, he preached against the Union, he fought to defend slavery. The horrors of imprisonment, close confinement, no one to see or talk to, words utterly fail to express the soul's anguish. The Civil War ends and the soldiers return home. The fort becomes empty, but not idle. Military tactics and weaponry have improved. So Fort Warren begins a race to revamp and modify her defenses. New military technology, like armored battleships, intensifies the race, necessitating concrete and earthworks defenses, along with another powerful and unique deterrent the disappearing gun. 12-inch guns installed at Fort Warren had a range of almost nine miles. The guns could also be fired and reloaded in less than one minute. They also improved the safety of soldiers, allowing them to reload with protection while facing direct fire. April 1917, America enters World War I. On the home front, the damp casemates in Fort Warren are once again crowded with troops. American coastal defenses are fighting a new kind of war. In World War I, the hidden enemy was the submarine. 
Minefields and submarine nets and anti-torpedo nets were used in Boston Harbor over a wide period of time. Fort Warren was the control center for those defenses. At the end of World War I, Fort Warren is placed on caretaker status, but it does not remain empty for long. Troops are called to duty to respond to the growing threat of a second world war, and Fort Warren becomes part of an active network of forts standing sentinel over Boston's harbor. Another wave of men and arms flood the island. Among them is Sergeant Irving Kloper. We turned out for infantry drill this morning with gas masks, tin hats, rifles, and bayonets. Maneuvers consisted of a simulated infantry attack on Fort Warren. The war was called off in time for dinner. Within months, Pearl Harbor is attacked. As soldiers are deployed for duty in Europe and the Pacific, Fort Warren becomes an important line of defense, protecting Boston against German attack. At the end of the Second World War, long-range missiles changed the face of warfare and made the era of coastal fortifications and long-range guns completely obsolete. In 1950, Fort Warren is decommissioned. No longer needed as a military asset, the fort is acquired by the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, and in 1970, it is designated a National Historic Landmark. Within years, this landmark becomes part of the new Boston Harbor Island State Park, owned and operated by the Department of Conservation and Recreation. In 1996, the islands are recognized as a National Park Recreation Area, and George's Island is the centerpiece. Access to George's Island is readily available via high-speed ferry from Boston's coast. Each summer, the walls of this historic fort are filled with visitors who come to unravel its rich story. Others use George's Island as a hub, hopping on inter-island shuttles to tour the neighboring islands. Every island in the park offers exciting new opportunities for outdoor adventure. Discover the harbor's magnificent views of downtown Boston, kayak through the island waterways, see a historic ball club, join a fleet, then wind down on the pier for a clam bake, stay the night at a shoreline campground, and spend the following afternoon relaxing by the water. All of the islands of our park offer a different perspective from the everyday life in downtown Boston. They offer us nature, they offer us views, they offer us a chance to step back in history. For 100 years, Fort Warren protected the people of Boston. Today, it is the people that protect, preserve, and continue its legacy.